Let's take a look at installing Creo Parametric. Before you install Creo though, there are two things that you need to do. First, you will go to support.ptc.com and make sure that you have your latest license. From the support page, you can go to manage licenses. And from the license management page, you can retrieve your existing license by entering in your Mac ID address. Second, from support.ptc.com, you need to download the software that you want to install. In this case, I want to install Creo Parametric 11, so you can go to order or download software updates, and you will see the different products that you are capable of downloading. I will go to Creo Parametric. Here we have release 11.0. I will expand the little plus sign, and you can download the Creo Human Factors Library. Those are the additional mannequin assemblies that you can use for ergonomics. And there's a CADS 5 adapter for Creo. But here we have Creo 11.0 for Windows. Then we can expand most recent version. And then here is the button for downloading the software code. There is an option to install from web, but I'm old school. I am used to just installing the whole thing and then installing it locally. Okay, if you have the software downloaded, then you want to unzip the file. Here I am in the folder where I have unzipped the software and I've renamed the folder to Creo 11. Let me double click on it. And in this folder, you will see that there is an executable for installing the trial version, but I'm going to use the standard executable setup.exe. Let's double click on it. And now the installer opens up. Let me minimize my Windows Explorer. And here it says, welcome to the Creo Installation Assistant. I'm going to install new software. If we already had Creo 11 installed on the computer, you would get some additional options, like if you wanted to upgrade your existing installation. But let's click on the Next button. Now we are on the Software License Agreement page. I recommend at least one point you will read this whole thing just because there are some interesting things in the software agreement that you should be aware of. But I'm just going to click on the button to accept the software license agreement and then check the box to confirm that I am going to use this in compliance with the export agreement. Now I will click the next button and we are on the license identification page. There is a plus sign that you can expand if you want to generate a license file using a sales order number or product code. But here we have our field where we can enter in an existing license server. And the port number is usually 7788. And then you would use at and whatever license server you would be using to get your license. But I'm going to select a license locally. Let me hit the open button. And now I'm going to navigate to where I have my licenses. I store them in a folder called PTC and then license. And I have a bunch of different licenses around here. I am going to change the view to detail so I can figure out, hey, which is the most recent one that I downloaded? And it looks like it is this one. Now be aware when you get a license, there are two different versions. There's the standard license and then there's one without standard in the name. One of these two licenses enables license borrowing. So let's say that you have to go on a trip. You might want to grab a license and put it locally on your machine from the network server. So that way you can use Creo when you are not connected to the internet or can not access your company's license server. But I will grab one of these licenses here. And now it is doing a little check and saying, yep, the status is available. I can indeed use that. And if you want to, you can add in an additional license source. Sometimes you might have multiple license files. So I'm going to use a little open icon over here. Once again, go to the folder where I have my licenses. And I'm in a situation where I have multiple different licenses. Let me grab a, another one that I have and I'll choose the open button. And once again, it will check to see if it is available. And I am good. 
There is a plus sign down here where you can skip licensing so that if you don't have access to your license right now, you can at least install the software. Now you won't be able to use it, but you can always add the licensing in later on. Let's click on the next button. And now we are in the application selection tab. Here's where you can choose a different folder to install Creo 2. I always use the default program files PTC. And here it says it's going to install Creo Parametric and these other additional utilities. There's a checkbox down here to enable diagnostic data collection for these applications. And back in the day, I used to always uncheck this, but I have changed my mind on that. This is to allow PTC to get information like if your software crashes or how any other different problems are coming up. And so, yeah, I let PTC have that information about it. So everything is good on here. So I will click on the next button. And now this takes me to the customized application screen. And so here we have the application features and by default, it's going to install Creo Simulation Live, Creo Render Studio, Creo Flow Analysis and Creo Mold Analysis. But I am also going to be using Creo Ansys Simulation and Creo Simulate. So I will install those and I will install the Creo Expert Mold Base. And then there are some other additional options down here, like if you want to install the Fatigue Advisor, I don't have a license for that. Since I am installing Creo Simulate, I can also enable Finite Element Modeling Mode. That's if you are going to use Creo Simulate in order to mesh your model, set them up, and then export them to solve in some other analysis package like Nastran, for example. So anyhow, there are a bunch of other different options in here, and there are options for the API toolkits and the interface for the JT visualization format for export. You can also choose different languages in here. But I'm happy with what I've selected for the application features. Then there's a tab here for command configuration. And so by default, there's going to be one configuration. You can edit this. And I'll click on the edit button. And here it shows the different licenses that I have available to run in here. You can change the order of licenses if you want to. So for example, if I wanted to grab my advanced design license first, I could select it and move it up. Or then I can say, ah, you know what, I want this other license to be first. And if you have any available extensions or floating options, you can add them to be launched at startup as well. So this is good for me for now. Oh yeah, by the way, if you wanted to take some of these different licenses and not have them available, you could do that as well. But let me click the OK button out of there. You can create additional configurations. And this is typically something that an administrator would want to do. For example, maybe you have people who do a lot of surfacing, so you want them to be able to get licenses for ISDX or some other different functions. You can set up a specific configuration for them. There are other people who are basic users, so they're probably only going to need the standard license for parts, assemblies, and drawings. Maybe you have advanced assembly and you want to give people that option as well. So you can add in multiple different license configurations. There is a shortcuts tab where you can choose where you are going to get icons or if you're going to get it in the start programs menu. You can modify the environmental settings for all users or just the current user who is installing this. And since I chose Creo Simulate, well, here you can choose the simulate licenses and I just have basically the mechanical light version available to me. So all this is good. There is an install button. So I will click that and let's let it run. Okay, so it took about five minutes on my computer and we can see that everything installed. Note that Creo Parametric completed with warnings. If you hover your mouse over the little warning sign, it will tell you what warnings you have. So for example, my computer is about seven years old, so it is not 
good enough to run Photo Render Studio, and there's some other different things that Creo Ansys Simulation needs on my computer, so you can see everything that is necessary for me to get rid of any of those different warnings. But this is all good. Let's click on the Finish button. And so here is the icon. Let me reposition it to where I want it to be on my screen. Note that I have multiple versions of Creo installed on my computer all the way back to Wildfire 5.0. Yes, you can have multiple versions of Creo installed. Another thing that you want to do after the installation, you want to right click on the icon and then go to Properties and you wanna change your start in folder. So for example, I have all my configuration files located on the C Creo folder. So I'm gonna change the start in folder. Let me go to C Creo. That way it'll automatically open up my config.profiles and it'll look and behave the way that I want it to. Now I will click on the OK button. Yeah, I get a warning from Windows about needing administrator permission. I will click on continue and I am all set up to launch Creo. I can double click on the icon. Okay, and you'll notice that we get a warning here. One of the enhancements to Creo 11 deals with map keys. They now have their own dedicated file, so I will close that. And Creo 11 is up and running and I am ready to go.